Amen. Now, now we are moving into a different time, and I am so looking forward to this moment. If there's anyone out in the hall, I would ask them to come in, because this isn't now about a time for a speech. This is now a time for prayer, and this is a time for repentance. Repentance is needed in this hour. We're in the period of teshuva on the biblical calendar, the Hebrew calendar, when Moses ascended the mountain for the third time and he received for the second time the tablets, the commandments. What was his purpose in ascending the holy hill? It was to repent. It was to repent for the Jewish people who fell into idolatry, who were worshiping the golden calf. And so he went up to plead before the Lord to repent. It is this time of year that teshuva, return to the Lord, is patterned after. And it's a gift that God gives. It is a gift that he knows that our hearts, though we give ourselves to him, our hearts tend to wander. We tend to look inward. We tend to be selfish and not think about the things of the Lord and worse yet, allow obedience to the word of the Lord to slip. And that's the gift of teshuva on the calendar that we have this time when we lean in, when we read his word, and when we rend our hearts before him and ask him, as King David said, search me and try me, O Lord, and if there is any wicked way within me, Lord, remove that from me. First show it to me and then remove it from me. Because we cannot do these things by ourselves. Only he can, only through his power through his precious Holy Spirit can he come in and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that's what we are here for. This is the work. This is the reason why we are here for the Jerusalem prayer breakfast. As my beloved brother Albert said, God has privileged us to have 29 Jerusalem prayer breakfasts all over the world. And this is the centerpiece work that we call that nation or that city to do. And it is to repent. Repent for ourselves. Repent for our nation. Repent for how we have treated Zion. As we spoke about Joel chapter 3 verse 2, there is only one criteria upon which the nations will be judged. And that is how they have treated Zion. Have they divided the land? Have they scattered the people? Have they cheapened the Jewish people or terrorized the Jewish people or cheapened the Jewish way of life? Because God created the nation of Israel to be a light unto the nations, to bring the law forth from Zion and to give us, the rest of the nations, a pattern for living. That's why Israel is a blessing to all nations on earth. And ask ourselves, how have we treated this tremendous gift that God gave to the earth, the people group to whom his Messiah descends, the Messiah that redeems the whole world? And so this is our time to come forth and repent. And I will read now from the word of the Lord. I'd ask if you want to close your eyes, if you want to bow your head, but I would ask that we would come with one heart, one mind, in full unity as we come before the Lord during this period of repentance. Acts 17.30 says, The times of ignorance God overlooked. But now he commands all people everywhere to repent, all nations. No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Whoever conceals his transgressions will not prosper. 
but he who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. So be zealous and repent. Or do you presume on the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? Oh, Father, we thank you for this month of Alal, this month on your biblical calendar when you are open to receiving your beloved and hearing the prayers of your beloved. Lord, we first come to you with personal repentance. Lord, we fall on our face, we fall on our knees as you shine a light upon our mind, our hidden thoughts, our speech, our speech that doesn't honor you, our hearts, our hearts that turn from you and turn to our own wicked way, our hands that bring about sin in our own lives and bring harm against others, our feet and legs who can't wait to carry us into trespass and to trespass against you. Oh God, we, we repent personally for those grievous sins in our own lives. Lord, not just because we are caught and you've caught us in that sin. We grieve because we have violated your standard. We invite your Holy Spirit in this room, in this moment, so that we can see the fullness of your wonderful face, so we can see your holiness as you were in the Garden of Eden with the first man and woman that you created, a perfect relationship between yourself and man ready and able to give every act of goodness and kindness. Nothing was lacking. Your name represented strict justice. We see that as a negative, strict, we don't like that. Justice, we don't like that because we know we're guilty. And yet that is the condition upon which you created the world. Strict justice, because there was no sin in the world. And strict justice prevailed. What a great world you gave. And our forebears sinned. And from them, Lord, we were contained in Adam and Eve. Our seed was in them. And that sin then came into us. And you and your graciousness and your kindness in the garden, you pronounced that you would bring a redemption that you would defeat the serpent. Lord, you would crush his head and all he would do is bruise your heel. And so, Father, we thank you that at the moment that we turned against you and we sinned, that at the very moment there you were with your love to redeem and reach out and tell all of mankind, I will make a way where there is no way. And so you called a man, Abram, from Ur of the Chaldees. You called him to come into the land that you said you would give him forever. Genesis 15, 18. You, from him, from his son Isaac, the child of promise. From Isaac, Jacob. And from Jacob and his 12 sons, the 12 tribes. From those descendants would be your chosen people and all the world would be blessed through this line of redemption that you created to redeem all of us, Lord, as you called all of us to come into repentance. And so in this moment, we repent. As we look at your holy face, as we experience your glorious presence, Lord, we want to be where you are. We know that your train fills your temple. 
And so here in New York City, Father, as we come to you on bended knee in repentance, Lord, we come to you now as proxies in this city, this greatest of all cities in the world, New York City. Lord, we come to you and ask for repentance for this city. This city of New York, Father, that has allowed Jew hatred to occur over the history of this city from its very inception. It welcomed the first Jew. The next 23, it was barring from its city walls until the first Jew contended and prevailed. And he was the poorest among them, but he said he would be the one who would be the guarantor for those 23. And Peter Stuyvesant relented and allowed them to come in. That was the beginning of the discrimination. And we see it yet today. We see it in this last year at Columbia University, as we have heard. We see it at, on the NYU campus. We see across this city where there were demonstrations after October 7th where individuals were in the streets in front of a children's hospital, a Jewish children's hospital. The nurses, the doctors, the children in cancer treatment looking down on the street while they're dealing with their cancer and on the streets, the people shaking their fists, death to Israel, death to the Jews. Oh God, forgive this city. Forgive this city for hating in a, a sense that you write about in your word. It is though they have drunk from the cup of reeling, a cup filled with alcohol and drugs mixed. They've drunk from that cup, and they have such an Israeli uh, uh, dysfunctional view of the Jew that it is incomprehensible, this hatred. It's not a hatred that is in any way natural. It is a cup of reeling. And so we repent for the cup of reeling that has been poured out in the city of New York, in the city that has not stood for what is right and true and just. We repent for the lack of justice in this city. We repent for the district attorney in New York City who doesn't seem to know right from wrong, criminal from innocent, and who refuses to uphold justice. We pray, Lord, and we confess and repent even at the state level in the attorney general's office. Lord, where we see there is not righteousness, there is not justice coming forth from that office. We repent as proxies for what we see. We are not here to be in any wise political. That isn't our purpose. We are here to be biblical. Amen. There is a mandate, O oh God, that you have given regarding justice. There is a mandate that you have given regarding the treatment of one another, to love one another, to bear one another's yeah. burdens. And Father, we repent that in this city, the church, those who claim the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we repent for the church that has failed to stand up yeah. for the suffering Jew in our midst who has been killed and stabbed and pelted. And where have we been? Where has our voice been? Oh God, we repent for our lack of advocacy for our brethren when we know better, when the word of God tells us better. Father, I cry out to you for the United States of America and for how we have treated Israel and the Jewish people since October 7th. Lord, again, not to be political. What have we done that is biblical? What have we done that is unrighteousness? And our leader of our country that we elected went to Israel and gave a check not to the Jews who were, per who were killed and who were tortured, but gave a check for hundreds of millions of dollars to Hamas. They said it wasn't Hamas, but that's exactly where it went. Yeah. The check cleared to their bank accounts. Yeah. 
and the billionaires who've stolen and skimmed all the money in the past took yet more. And Father, what we have done to aid those who hate Israel, who killed the Jews, we have been the ones who financed this. For that we repent. We repent of the billions of dollars that we have given for the pay to slay program. Money that went to pay terrorists to kill innocent Jews that is still going to kill innocent Jews. The money that we have given to the United Nations Refugee Relief Organization where they were actually terrorists themselves. They actually participated in October 7th themselves. We paid for that. We repent. Yes, God. We repent. And oh God, as this war has conducted, we can't even figure out who needs to win and who needs to lose. And we have told Israel, you're not allowed to win. What is wrong with us? Oh God, we repent. We repent of our vice president who in a November speech gave Hamas's talking points and spoke to the prime minister of Israel as though he was a little child and told him you are not going to win this war. We refuse to let you win this war. And at the end of the day, you better step aside because we are going to get behind a terror state on your border. Oh God, we repent. Yes. We repent. Again, not being political, but we repent. And now the question is munitions and weapons. And we have been slow walking. When we saw over 300 rockets from Iran for the first time in history come against the Jewish state, it's as though our default position is, oh, well, Israel's just unique. God will take care of them. He will be the umbrella. Oh, yes, he will. But we will miss the opportunity to be privileged, to be used by God, to bless when Israel is in her greatest hour of need. This year has been the greatest hour. If we would all leave New York City in this moment and go to Jerusalem and go to the northern border and go to the Gaza border and go to the border of Jordan and go, to, go over to Judea and Samaria and go to the south where Egypt is, if we saw all of the attacks or Yemen that fired a missile into the heart of Israel yesterday, if we were there and could see in the eyes of the people the post-traumatic stress that they've lived with for a year. They haven't had time to even grieve. And yet here we are in the United States, supposedly Israel's big friend. What a lie. And we've put our thumb on the scale, on the side of the perpetrators who killed little babies and raped innocent women and continue to rape innocent women. Oh God, we repent. We repent. Oh Father, we don't deserve your forgiveness, but we receive it because we need it. We need it. And in this year, Lord, when we've seen our own nation turn upside down into a nation we no longer remember, and we wonder why. We wonder why. It's because we've abandoned our first love. Our first love is your word and our obedience to your word. So, Lord, in this, these days, as we are ascending to Rosh Hashanah, the first day on the calendar, Lord, the, the sweet new year that will begin when it's the 10 days of awe and reverence for your holiness and, and who you are as we continue to repent and ask that our name be written in your book as we come to the day of atonement at one minute with you on Yom Kippur on October 12th. Father, we repent. 
and for all nations, I ask that you would stand now, stand and repent for your nation. Stand and repent for what you know has been wrong in your own life, in your own city, as we've seen the United Kingdom essentially turn its back on Israel, as they completely stopped even giving them weapons and ammunition. Oh, I, pr I, I pray repentance over the United Kingdom. I pray they would come to their senses. Lord, all nations seem to have their backs turned toward Israel in this moment when Iran has built and fortified a ring of fire unlike anything Israel has ever faced since 1948, much less 1967. We have no idea the Armageddon that the head of the snake, Iran, has planned for Israel. And yet, Lord, you are the Holy One. You are the God of Israel. You are the one with a strong right arm. You are the God who neither slumbers nor sleeps. So in this hour, Lord, as we pray our prayers of repentance, we pray in advance for the evil that evil doers are planning toward Israel. And we cancel those plans now in your mighty name, in the name of Hashem, that none of those evil plans will come to birth, see the light of day, or prosper. I pray every one of those 150,000 rockets embedded in southern Lebanon, I pray that you would, de you would neuter those rockets. I would pray that you would make them ineffective, blow them up, let them never one of them come in to hurt your people or harm them. Lord, take away every weapon of warfare out of Gaza. Again, Lord, make their, make their gunpowder go dry and stale, that it would never work. Those, those troops that are in Syria, that are in Iraq, that are waiting to come, they have bloodlust on their mind. Lord, I pray you would blind them. Blind them, let them not be able to advance against the Jewish people. Lord, we ask that you would now, again, with Iran, just cancel and defile their plans that they would come of naught. And the pressure that is happening to the King of Jordan, I pray, O oh God, that all of those who are in Jordan right now and the ammunition, again, Lord, remove it from their hands, that it would come to nothing. Lord, you know the fortress that's been built in Judea and Samaria. Lord, I pray that, that you are the fortress. I pray that your fortress would come forth and that theirs would fall like the walls of Jericho. And I pray for Egypt and that border and all of the shameful tunnels that for, for filthy lucre, the, 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 the family of El Sisi and the 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 country of Egypt, they allowed the weapons of war to go in and kill the Jewish people. What shame. And so we repent. We repent for Iran. We repent for Egypt. We repent for Syria. We repent for Iraq. We repent for Jordan. We repent for the Palestinian Authority. We repent for Hamas. We repent for Hezbollah and for all of the enemies of unrighteousness. And we say that the name of the Lord will be lifted up. We say that you, you will be established and that your name will be a praise over all of the earth and that Jerusalem will be protected, that Israel will be protected and stand tall and the Jewish people will be saved. And the, blood, the, the tear by night that is intended for them will not come to pass. We thank you now for the faith, the faith, Lord, in this room of those who name your name, who know that they have no innate, no innate power. The power comes from you. And so we give the glory back to you now. And we ask that you would have thine own way. In the mighty name of Hashem, the God of Israel, we pray. Amen. Amen.